Hey guys, welcome back to the third edition of Wrestling With Positivity. If you guys are new here, the Wrestling With Positivity has been a very important project that I've been working on since I think last year I started it. Um, so there's two videos up on the channel. So if you haven't watched them, please feel free, go back, check those videos out as well. I've also been incorporating them into my Under the Rope series as well. Whenever I have somebody that I interview and we talk about wrestling with positivity, there's so much negative in the world of social media and, you know, drama. There's, there's just a lot. And sometimes people just get completely consumed in it, but people aren't always talking about the positive that happens in wrestling. I've been fortunate enough to witness so much that it made me want to talk about it and share it with people that might not see it. Um, so it's such a beautiful thing. And in previous videos, we've had parents, we've had fans, we've had wrestlers, we've had promoters, we had referees, we had all different types of people telling stories that had happened in wrestling. There's been videos and pictures and birthday parties and such impactful moments that has happened in wrestling. So like I said, I wanted to share all this with you guys so I can't thank everybody who has participated in the past who's participated in this video even my under the rope series uh, interviews as well so thank you so much and anybody that's listening to this thank you I love you so much so make sure you hit that like button make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn that bell on to see every future uh, podcast and interviews that I do and more wrestling with positivity so well, it has to deal with Catherine, your dear sweet goddaughter. My little one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, the first one was at um, Pro Wrestling and Magic, uh, where um, back in May, it was Rocky Romero versus Vinny Pacifico. Mm -hmm. And Rocky coming out. I think me, Brad, and Kathy were the only ones rocking to his theme and everything, and of course, Brad and Kathy got like all the um, the necklace and the four finger rings that they got off from Rocky's website. And Rocky is all like hyped and everything, seeing us and everything. And then it's like after the match, Brad asked our ref friend DM Stevens, was like, "Is Rocky gonna be out doing autographs later?" And DM found out that it's after the show. Right. Well, um, like. I think it was the main event and everything. Rocky had already come out and everything was doing, so I kind of nudged Brad. I'm like, let's go. <laughs> Before it gets too busy. And so we went over there, we're talking and everything, and um, like, and we're like talking and everything. I had a good like 10 minute conversation with him and just how much she loves him and like the music that he does and everything. and. Um, he grabbed, like, one of the micro brawlers for his, like, little, um, Chico El Luchador. Yeah. And he goes to Brad. He's like, can I give this to her? <laughs> and he gives it to her. And Brad's like, how much? And he's like, no, no. It's for, I, it's for me. So, that was, like, the first one. And the second happened on Pride and Vi week weekend. Mm -hmm. Um, back in June. Um, two days, Cassandra Cup 2 and Paris is Bumping. Mm -hmm. uh, first night with Cassandra Cup, it was um, Darius Carter versus Billy Dixon. Yes. In the I Quit match for Billy's quote unquote retirement. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Kathy's going crazy during this match cheering for Billy because she despises Darius. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, after Darius beat Erica in the Super 8, yeah, <laughs> made her cry. And with this, um, like, during the match, she's, just, like, yelling for Billy, and Darius goes over to her and, like, putting up his fist and everything. And bless Nick Shin, he goes over to Darius, like, you hurt her. I That gives me permission to hurt you. <laughs> or something along those lines. So, yeah. yeah I mean, we loved it. We love Nick. <laughs> and then, um, like, towards the end of the match, uh, like, at, Darius had tied um, Billy Sands behind his back. was beating him up in the ring, but he would not quit. Mm -hmm. So Faye got into the ring to try to help Billy. Mm -hmm. 
like untie him and stop Darius. Well, Darius goes to hurt Faye, and so Billy quits. Kathy lost it because <laughs> she was crying because he lost. I'm like, he was doing it to save his friend. And then, of course, when Darius attacked Faye afterwards, yeah, it, she lost it. She was crying and everything. And, like, of course, like, after Darius left, went to the back and everything, Billy gets on the mic and everything. He's like, this is not the way I want to go out. Yeah. And then he, like, looks at Kathy like, I'm sorry. It's like, I'm sorry, Tara. Like, it was so sweet. And, like, everyone was so concerned for Kathy that night and everything. Yeah. Then the next day, we go to Paris' bumping and everything. And um, our friend, uh, Matt Awesome, mm-hmm. comes over. He says, I got a present for Kathy. He has these chanclas with his um, logo on and everything. Yeah. He autographed and he gave it to her. Yeah. So that was cute. And then... um. Let's see what else happened that oh, night. The, <laughs> there was so the, much that I, night. I know. And the, then, um, um, House of McQueen, um, uh, one of the uh, members, um, DM Cadeau, mm-hmm. he, like, him and Brad are friendly on Twitter and everything, and one of his um, wristbands that he got with all the sequins and everything, he gave that to Kathy. Aww. And, um, uh, then when we went to go meet on Dark Sheik during yeah. intermission, she gave, like, this little, like, medallion and everything. She wanted to give that to Kathy as well. So that was, like, super sweet of her to do that. Especially after she just won the um, title from Darius, which made Kathy super happy. Right. And we, of course, we mentioned our favorite muff cabbage, um, Charles Mason, when <laughs> he kicked his butt. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and then, um, Uh, what else? What else was? And then, the, like after the show, yeah, was the big, yeah. We go over to Billy, and we're just saying we loved it and everything. Kathy want to get a picture, so and um, take the picture. And he goes to us. You did get VIP, right? He says, yeah. He says, wait a minute, I got something for you. Mm-hmm. He goes over. He yells over to the stage where um, Sunny Kiss was actually, mm-hmm. and um, says, um, throw me the bag. And she throws it to him, and it's these overalls he wore to several different shows and everything. And he had it signed by the entire um, roster. Aww. He's like, here, I want this. I want you to have this. And I mean, I was like holding back tears that night too. That's so great. Mm-hmm. And plus, another thing, before like the show even started, we're just waiting outside and everything. Faye walks out. She, like, runs over to Kathy and gives her a hug. And it's like, I'm all right. He's going to get his. She, she was trying so bad not to curse and oh. everything. <laughs> he was like, he's going to get his. Don't worry. So. I feel like there's so many impactful people. And I feel like another one that we need to bring up on this one. Because I know, like, you like mentioned a whole bunch of people. And that everybody's, you know, done so many amazing things. But Jordan Oliver really needs to be oh, brought yes. up Jordan's on this. Oh, yes. Jordan's been, a, like, a huge impact on her. Yeah. Him and Casey are, like, number one in Kate, Kathy's books. And Marcus. Right. Yes. So great. I they mean. Were, like, the top three. And they have been, like. So very nice to her. Oh, yeah. I just, like, I remember, so I'm just going to share one so we can add this to it, is that I remember when Jordan lost the in the scramble, right? Was it the scramble match at the Atlantic City? Was it? Yeah, it was the scramble. So Atticus screwed him over. Yeah, and Kathy got really upset. And, and Kathy, after, and Kathy helped him out him of the... Hug. Yeah, she, like, helped him out of the ring. It was mm-hmm. so cute. And I was like, but these, mm-hmm. are, these are the moments that... Yes. You know, it's all about the kids. And, and it's like, just like you fall in love with it. For the show it. before that, it was Jordan versus Arcadia. Yeah. And when we were banging on the um, <laughs> a mat. apron, he <laughs> came over and gave her a hug. Yeah. From so the ring. So. I have to. I had to bring that one up because. Mm-hmm. And then Casey always go- looking like saying, that's my girl. Yeah. I blow in the kisses at Kathy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it's, mm-hmm. it's, those are the moments. Those mm-hmm. are the best moments. <laughs>
so I've returned with Trayvon Jordan. So I wanted, when I decided to do this project again, you were first in mind after this past weekend. Um, so actually, I'm just going to let you talk about it uh, because, like I said, it was such a wholesome moment. So I'm just going to let you talk about it through your perspective. For sure. So there's so many facets that go into it. But uh, this past Saturday at Northeast Wrestling, the show with no name, I defeated Dan Moff and became the new Northeast Wrestling heavyweight champion, something that dreams are made of. Um, my entire family was there, my mom, my dad, my sister, my brothers, my cousins, every single member of my family and the Northeast Wrestling family, my trainer, Matt Taven, my tag team partner, my training brother, Love Doug, uh, my big brother in training, John Roy, literally my entire family was there to watch this moment and for it to come to flight. Um, before I went out, I thought about this one moment when I was growing up as a kid. And it was when I met Matt and Jeff Hardy for the first time. Um, I brought my notebook for an autograph. And unfortunately, you know, I couldn't get the, the autographs inside the notebook, but I was able to get a picture. And my mom blew the picture up for me. And I've always looked at it ever since I was a kid and thought, that's what I want to do. Before I left the stage, after I got the picture, I tapped Jeff Hardy on the arm. And I said, when I grow up, I want to be exactly like you are. And as I got older, the dream kind of evolved and the dream changed. I still wanted to be like Jeff Hardy, but I also, in an inspiration from Tupac, Tupac would always say he might not be the one who can change the world, but he might be the one who can spark the mind that does change the world. So I carry that with me every single time that I go out in front of the crowd. And there's so many young, impressionable minds over at the Northeast Wrestling. And just to have that moment where I defeated an unconquerable giant. We're talking 995 days, almost 1,000 days as a Northeast Wrestling champion. And I had the entire, entire gathering of Northeast Wrestling friends and family behind my back pushing for me, rooting for me, cheering for me, and hoping that I conquer this beast. And to make that happen for them, I just stepped into my own youthful shoes where if I had saw that moment as a young child, if I was still that 11, 10-year-old kid, Watching that moment, that's something that can inspire a generation from now. It's never just about me when I'm in there. It's about who's coming after me. And to have my younger brother who, when the first moment I won the championship, he jumps out of his seat. Mind you, my younger brother is visually impaired. He can't see anything. And he joined me in the ring for my celebration. And he goes, this is my first time in the ring. This is really cool. To have that moment with him, to put both of those title belts over his shoulder, meant the entire world to me. Because on my phone, on my lock screen, I actually have a wallpaper. It's just two simple words. It's for them. That's for everybody in my family. My brother, my sister, my dad, my mom. To pursue my dream and to be able to use all the love that they gave me and to carry that to a championship, to carry that to make my dreams come true, is exactly why I do this. It's for them. So many people do things for selfish reasons, but this I can say, I do it so that my younger brothers, for the young fans who are at Northeast Wrestling or any promotion that I'm at, they can see that anything is possible as long as you put your mind to it, as long as you stick to it, put your heart into it, and just use the drive and determination and the love of the people around you. Anything is possible. You on the other side of this, anything is possible. Tiffany, anything is possible. Yeah. All you have to do is believe in yourself and build a village around yourself. My mom, my dad, Taven, Jalen Brandon, Love Doug, John Roy. I have a huge army of people behind me. Like I told the crowd when I won the title this Saturday, I'm not just the Northeast Wrestling Heavyweight Champion. We all are the Northeast Wrestling Heavyweight Champion because I couldn't do it without any of them. And I couldn't do it without you. So thank you for watching. I believe in you. I love you. Whatever you put your mind to, focus. Channel in on your dream. Some people may not believe in you. Some people may not understand. But you can move mountains. You can do whatever it is that you want to do. Just believe. That's so beautiful. Like, ah, oh, just to be there in that moment, just like, again, watching family, you know, watching your friends, like, jump into the ring, all the kids that were jumping yeah. in the ring, like, it was such a beautiful moment. Um, so again, it's on the YouTube channel. 
so I'll put it in the link so anybody, if they want to watch it, definitely like watch it. This was such a wholesome moment. And, you know, like I For said, sure. that's why wrestling and positivity, you know, these are the things that we need to focus on. But no, it was it was beautiful. So and congratulations to the new champ. Thank you, thank Yay. you. And, and onward and upward, you know, now I gotta defend the belt. It's crazy, I got two belts I gotta defend on the show, it's nuts. But you know what, it's fine, as long as I have my family, the Northeast Wrestling crowd behind me, I can do anything, I can move a mountain, so I'm not scared of anybody. Everybody can bring it, everybody can get it, and everybody can bring it to it. Yes, I love it. <laughs> oh, yes, indeed. <laughs>much i'm super excited yes so give us a little bit about your wrestling with positivity so i have been a wrestling fan since i was eight years old and in 2007 was really when i like started to go to shows in the indies and i was like this is super super cool i have to figure out a way to be a part of this Mm -hmm. um and Four years ago, um, I just celebrated my anniversary on the 13th of this month. So four years ago, I was super, super lucky and super blessed to be introduced to the owner of RWA in Rhode Island, Mr. T. Phoenix, who has become my wrestling dad. I love him so much, and I can never thank him enough for taking a chance on me and letting me cross to the other side of the guardrail. That's where I started. Um, And my entire RWA family is absolutely amazing. I love them all so, so, so much. Um, And then after that, I also got the opportunity to work for another promotion called Watch This Fight, run by Mr. Nick Kachiri, another amazing 
person, human, absolutely fantastic. But when I started, um, I had four names on my wish list. Mike Grassa, Trigger the OG, JT Dunn, and Anthony Green. In September of 2021, within a week of each other, I actually got to announce Mike and then JT and Trigger in a match the week after them. And for a really long time, AG at the time was signed. He was on WWE, and I was like, that's never going to happen to me. Like, it's just going to be a name that sits there. It's going to be a wish. And then he got released. And I was sad, but I was happy at the same time because I'm like, oh, my God, maybe it really will happen. In March of this year, my family and I went to a Proving Ground show run by Derek Simonetti, also fantastic person. Yeah. Um, and the next morning, um, he had said at the show, dream, dream big, and don't ever let your dreams go. The next morning, I put a, place, a post on Facebook, and I was like, you know what? I'm putting this in the universe now. By the end of 2022, this is going to happen for me. I don't know how, I don't know when, I don't know where, but it's going to happen. In August, I happened to be at an event where Derek was, and he said, so, you know, we had talked about this previously. I'm booking AG. And I said, this is my official request to be able to do that. And he said, absolutely. So on September 17th, last month, um, it happened. And it is the single most exciting, but also the scariest thing I've ever done in my entire career. Because people always say, don't meet your heroes. And I am literally a, a day one AG fan. Like I've been his fan since he was a referee. And then when he was all good AG and then retro AG and then in WWE and now as well. So I'm like, I only get one shot to do this and I can't mess it up. And I was so incredibly scared. And I ended up seeing my best friend the Thursday before the show. And I was like, I'm so scared. I don't know what to do. And he said to me, if you're not nervous, it means you don't care. And this means so much to you. You should be nervous. And then I ended up seeing Anthony the next day at another show where I said, oh, well, I'll see you tomorrow. And he goes, yes, you will, where you'll be all dressed up. And that was the second that I knew he knew what was happening. And I was just like, oh, my goodness, this is really, really real. Um, and for a while, like, I went through like am I good enough do I really belong here and after that it was just like I really do belong in that ring just like my family always tells me and my I think my favorite thing about the whole thing is um my younger sister happened to be there on that night and a lot of the times um, I will get to yell out for my brothers that's my brother um and she actually yelled out that's my sister and that for me was like the one little thing, like I looked down at her and I was just like, either I'm gonna mess this up or it's gonna go really well, but it doesn't matter because she was there, my husband was there, tons of my friends were there, my younger brother was there. Uh, and I mean, somebody asked me afterwards, so what's next, what do you wanna do now? And I had a list, but Someone I love who means so much to me, I asked him who was on his who do you want to wrestle list. And he said, I don't have a list. I want to wrestle everybody. And now I don't need a list. I want to announce everybody. Yay. So so somehow, some way that will happen. But the person that I want to announce next is Alec Price. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's, he's the next one on the uh, on the superstars that I want to say that I have done their introductions for. Oh, the prize, our Northeast Beast. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's my best friend. I love it. I love it. Oh, thank you. I can't wait for that to happen. So... <laughs> I hope so. I hope so soon. Some someday soon. I hope so. I'm sure it will happen. But oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I can't wait to see this. I'm so excited. This is the first time I ever talked about it. I've never talked about it Aww. before. Well, thank you for sharing. So, I'm excited. Thank you for having me. Uh, 
this one is about Mike Skyros, the Moonlight Sun, uh, who Tiffany has a unique relationship with. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, when I was first starting my well, turn my podcast was originally a sports podcast with my friends, and after they decided to do it anymore, I decided to go all wrestling my passion and i was originally looking for people who wanted to be on because during the pandemic i was home for a bit dealing with some it was a good way to kind of mind off things and mike reached out to me and asked to be on so i put him on and that was the first time and he ended up being a really cool guy who uh, i won't lie when i initially first saw mike wrestle or just you know kind of heard of him i just felt like he had this demeanor that was kind of douchey <laughs> <laughs> wound up being farther from the truth but after the first time he was on we on for a couple other things and then when it came time to when I was running my first show for Wrestle so I, I really wanted Mike on it and he was all about it was completely supportive of me and was just At that time, I thought that our friendship was kind of more work -related. We were mutual friends through wrestling who kind of had these things going on together. And then uh, last year, it was actually right after the Hard Strong Goomy uh, my wife and I decided to split. And I was going through a, a rough time, and Mike knew it. And he you know, was always giving me the, uh, you know, if you need anybody, I'm here conversation. But I kind of wasn't really taking that too hard because – Everybody kind of tells you that after you tell people you're getting a divorce. Right. But it was right after uh, uh, NYCW show uh, at Adam Stone's, right outside Adam Stone's Brewery in Hollywood, New York. And uh, I was kind of having a rough day event, and I was hoping to hang out with some of the guys, but I ended up having to kind of duck out early and go take care of some other stuff. And I, I went up to Mike. I was like, hey, man, I got to go. And he was like, is everything okay? And I was like, in, in what sense? Because life. And Mike took the time to stop and talk to me. And he was like, well, you know, if, if you need anything, I'm here for. And I was like, yeah, but I really want to put that burden on you. Mm -hmm. And he was like, it's not a burden. And I said, yeah, but I mean, we don't really know each other tight. I don't want to make anything comfortable for you. And uh, it's this line that I'll never forget. Mike then said to me, I'd rather have an uncomfortable conversation with you than leave you on to deal with it. Okay. And that's when I kind of realized the moment that Mike and I weren't just buddies through wrestling. Mike was my actual friend and is. And uh, I, I love talking to him whenever I can. He always listens to my stupid idea about wrestling and gives me honest feedback. Uh, Mike was one of the first people I went to when I told him I have the itch to wrestle again. And he, whenever you want, you can come out to, to my school and train with me. Which he, again, didn't have this. So for Mike to kind of always be there for me, knowing whenever I need someone to talk to, it's it's been comforting and reassuring. If I had, you know, known that I was a dumb podcast that I started in my basement, I uh, I would have never expected that. So, Mike Skyros, that <laughs> Mike is being, not Mike... being a coward. <laughs> Mike is not sad after all. <laughs> well, thank you. Mike is. I'm, I'm sure he's going to get mad when he finds out that I'm doing this because Mike is a very Kind of reserved person. He doesn't really like to. I don't know if I would say show emotion, but you know, he he likes to to keep to himself. Right. And I'm gonna kind of humanize him with this, but he's that sad. <laughs> <laughs> <Nah. laughs> yeah. And uh, if if Mike cares about you, yeah. I'm lucky enough to have built that kind of friendship with him. 
So I got an email from one of the fans of the Indie Wrestling Corner, and they wrote a whole letter out. So I wanted to read it for you guys so that wouldn't be small print and a lot of words during you watching this video. So I'm going to read it from our good friend Jeff Perkins. So he said, not really sure where to begin. I had Demetrius give me favorite moments and they pretty much match mine. I'll start with our first indie show ever. That was an experience that I'll never forget. Chaotic Countdown 2021. Pretty sure if it was Chaotic's first live show post pandemic. Either my brother or Demetrius found Chaotic online and Demetrius favorite was Love Doug. So my brother, him and I headed our, out to Lowell for our first show. I honestly wasn't expecting much. Then we get to the place. It's tiny and I'm thinking, what the heck did I let them get me into? We were literally walking in single files in between a wall and mesh netting where they were playing cricket, uh, cricket directly on the other side of us. The ring was in the back corner of a basketball court. I was like, okay, I'll make it through the show. And if Demetrius likes it, him and my brother can keep going. Then the show started and it was, uh, and, and I was hooked just like them. Demetrius smiled was all it took. When Doug, came, when Doug came out, I yelled, you're my son's favorite. He came back around and gave Demetrius his heart glasses. That was amazing. That show just memory wise, match wise is still my favorite. That's where we met so many of our favorites. We got to take pictures with MSP, Davian, Becca, Dove, and Ricky Smokes. The show helped build a wrestling bond where we look forward to every upcoming show. Going to wrestling with my brother means the world to me. We were eight years apart in age, so we grew older as kids and we weren't super close, but my father wasn't really able to take us places, so my brother stepped up and took me to cool stuff like Bruins games and WWF. So I'm grateful my son can experience this with us. Now I'll list all the amazing people. I say people because, and not wrestlers, because they've shown my family that way out more than just wrestlers. Numerous times, the whole chaotic roster has made Demetrius, aka Little Love Doug, feel part of the show. We talk about Doug a lot, but it's really the whole roster. Even the unit, we love when Trigger tells us to shut your mouth or Danny Miles whines to the referee about Demetrius flipping him the bird. From Doug giving him his glasses and Santa hat to my personal favorite, Doug coming down to the ring with Demetrius on his shirt flipping off the unit. These are a couple, we'll add a few more. And let the queen choose the best memories. Not sure how long this could be. Another thing I'm grateful for, the indie wrestling scene. So it's helped Demetrius' mom and I learn to be friends post-breakup. Wrestling is something we all love as a family. So our favorite wrestler is Ricky Smokes. I won't lie, one of my favorites too. We were going to a show for her birthday, so I reached to Ricky to ask him to wish her a happy birthday. He said, of course. I had no clue he would do it in ring before the match with Davian. They were also focused pre-match, but he did. He winked at her and said, happy birthday. Totally embarrassed her, which I, which was amazing. <laughs> but one million percent made her night. She said it was her best birthday present ever. Ricky always goes out of his way to make sure he says hi and talks with Demetrius to every show. No matter how busy he gets after or during the show. My second favorite memory ever was a night where he had a ride mishap and would have to wait a while to head home that night Demetrius told got to hold the doors open for Ricky as the wrestlers and crew took out the ring and all the equipment I had to step away for a second because I started to tear up listening to Ricky talk with and answer all of his questions Demetrius was a little scared that night because we had to wait for a ride but Ricky talking with him and everyone making sure that he would be okay waiting for him for our ride totally melted our hearts and made him feel safe another time that was really amazing. Demetrius had a love in the city sign. During the match, Modar came out and threw it on the ground and stomped on it. I'll never forget that as soon as it was intermission, Modar literally came running over to let um, Demetrius know that it was part of the show. Him checking on him and any other reason of how they show the crowd they care and appreciate us in the crowd. Our first show, 
I never explained that we can't touch the wrestlers mid-match. So Demetrius yells, you suck. To Smash Master, Smash Master points to Demetrius. Demetrius grabs his finger and the Smash Master acts like he's being hurt by him. By him. I heard about that for months. I could honestly write for hours about the happiness that Chaotic and Indie Wrestling has brought us. I'll share two more Chaotic memories and one from APW. The last two Chaotic memories are both very special because they made Demetrius feel like he was part of the show. So Doug was banned by the cowards from the unit for a show. They had security going around with a picture of Doug making sure he wasn't there. Well, Demetrius' mullet was fire at the point so security kept acting like he was doug and trying to throw him out well we had enough and roughed up one of the security and they played along that's funny if you guys like you know if you go back on the channel you'll see like the videos of like love doug getting thrown out of chaotic wrestling <laughs> um the next memory at this show not only did Marta give my friend's nephew was signed chair that was uh, smashed over Smash Master's head. Chaotic had a tag team lottery match where they played along. The next memory at the show. Okay, so Chaotic uh, had a tag team lottery match where they put Demetrius up flipping off the unit as the possible entrance in the match, which is really cute. I'll attach that. Last memory comes from APW. There was a tag team match between the Brick City Boys. Sorry, forget the name of the other team, but one of the guys had the H2O on his gear. So Demetrius yelled out, Water sucks, and flips him off. The guys start calling security over to get him thrown out. So BCV brings Demetrius in the ring to protect him. <laughs> it is amazing. So, like, there's so much, and he attached so many memories and photos and i always see them at the shows at chaotic i really love chaotic so make sure you go support them as well but thank you for sharing this with us hi my name is lucha professor on twitter and for those who don't know i'm a real life educator i work in higher education in the west coast and um i have two stories to share with you and we're gonna go back to 2020 and it was after the death of george floyd and during this time i worked with students and who are part of underrepresented populations in higher education. And after the death of George Floyd, many of my students were, just like the rest of uh, many of people in America, were upset and angry and sad and pissed off and wanted change. And during this time, I had went on Twitter and I saw a wrestler by the name of Suge D, who I had seen on AEW at the time, who mentioned something similar to the importance of advocacy and educating and fighting um, for change and enough was enough. And I reached out to Shug D and I said, Shug, I told him who I was, I told him um, my students and the backgrounds and how they want change and they're tired of seeing what we're seeing. And I said, would you be willing to come talk to my students about kind of your experiences in America, your experiences in wrestling and how to um, fight for change. And so Shugdi said, not a problem. We set up a Zoom workshop and we had a very powerful uh, workshop where he, Shugdi shared his experiences, told the story, um, talked about racism in, in America, racism in wrestling, about how to fight for change, what can we do um, for the future. Because of that, I came up with this idea of doing a series of presentations where we would invite people part of the wrestling community and it was called Wrestling with the Justices where we can talk about how to tackle the different injustices that um, you know populations and communities face in America. So back fasting forward to 2022, um, I met a wrestler by the name of Kid Bandit in Dallas during WrestleMania weekend and I had seen their journey on Twitter and post about their experiences. And I introduced myself. I said how much I respected them, how much I had a lot of love and admiration for them. Told them who I was. And I said, you know, if you are willing to, I work with students who, um, and we work in our schools set in a conservative area, I said who are part of um, the LGBT community. And we also have students who are just not educated because we don't talk about that stuff in our community because it's a conservative area. They try to hide everything you possibly can. 
I said, and they need to learn. And there's things that I just can't teach them. And Kid Bandit graciously gave up um, their time to not just talk about being a part of the LGBT community and the history and um, and how to be an ally for those who aren't part of the community and how to also, um, he also talked about experiences being a part of the Asian American community, Asian community here in America um, during our Asian American and Pacific Islander month, the month prior. You know, and I have so much love and admiration and respect for them that I, I can't even put it into words because a lot of times I go on Twitter and I see individuals in the rest of the community who talk about advocacy, who talk about change, who talk about being better people. And I tell them, you know, I have a platform where we have a group of 17, 18 year old students who they want to learn, they don't know what to do. Um, and there's things that I just, I'm, I'm not qualified to talk about. And oftentimes when I offer them this uh, an opportunity, I'm met with silence and I don't understand if it's a virtual signaling or, or what it is. Um, and it hurts because, you know, my students mean everything to me and they are the future of America and they're going to be our leaders and they need those opportunities to learn. And so that's why Shubdi and Kid Bandit will always have a supporter in me and I wish them nothing but the best in life. They deserve all the success in the world. And um, those are my two stories with two incredible talents. I hope you all have a wonderful holiday season. Um, stay healthy and be blessed. because it really, it was li a life-changing thing, not even a wrestling thing. Um, so ICW went over to Australia, and we did the Australian tour um, with DMDU, a death match down under. And going into it, I knew some people, but um, I didn't really know how we were going to be received. I'm like, you know, I know people watch in Australia, but I wasn't quite sure of the reception that we were going to get. Um and being there, it was it completely, it, it changed my life. The support and love that the Australian deathmatch community uh, shows each other, um, whether it's a fan, a ref, a worker, a, a commentary, whoever it is, um, everybody is so happy to be in this community and to be around each other and to, to just be a part of it. So it was really beautiful. I mean, you get a lot of people that are like, I like your work and I like, you know, what you do, but this was on a deeper level. It was, um, you inspire me. Um, you got me through a really tough time in my life, uh, like really deep emotional connections, um, that these people have with us. And it was just such a beautiful thing to experience. Um, to be around so much love. Um, I know I was talking to Joel Bateman about it, saying that we're going to chase this feeling forever because it was just the most beautiful love, that, like the most genuine love that you could ever experience. And it was with a bunch of, of strangers. It was with people that we met, you know, for the first time and spent two days with, three days with. So it was just a very overall um, beautiful thing to be included in that um the workers, everyone's just so happy to be doing what they love and to be doing it with someone else and just the teamwork and the support. And it was just something I've never experienced before, um, inside or outside of wrestling. I don't know if I'll ever experience it again. Um, but it was just really special. And I, I think, um, they're, they're just amazing people over there who really just love wrestling. Yeah.